Today, we're making two concrete vanity tops with two completely different styles. This one has exposed aggregate, a polished top, a live edge, and an undermount sink. This one has a polished top, no exposed aggregate, square edge, epoxy, and a top mount sink. This one I've actually been commissioned to do. The only problem is I have no idea if they're going to like it or not. Let's make something cool anyway. Just to give you a little backstory on both these projects, to give you a little bit of context, uh, this vanity top is actually for me and my family. We're gonna be doing a little bathroom renovation pretty soon here. This project right here was actually commissioned by a very good friend of mine who happens to be my old boss. Uh, his wife, Maria, gave me several different design options, but in the end, she said something that every contractor fears most, which is, surprise me but no pressure or anything. So I had to come up with two very unique designs here that will hopefully impress both my wife and Joe's wife. So now let's talk about building the molds for these two bad boys. So here's what I've done so far. Both molds are made out of simple melamine boxes screwed together with one and a half inch screws. Only mold number one is two inches deep. Mold number two was made at an inch and a half deep. Also with this mold, I did add a slight radius to the front to give it some visual appeal. As far as the knockouts are concerned for the faucets, on both molds there's our inch and a quarter PVC pipe. Now this time I wanted to try something new, so I cut slits in each PVC knockout. Now I'm sure this is not necessary, but I did add some tape over the slits just in case the concrete feels like seeping through. And for this particular drain, this one required a two and a half inch PVC knockout. I glued all of them down with a rapid set flexible construction adhesive. As far as the knockout is concerned for the undermount sink on this particular vanity, usually I would end up cutting out this shape with scrap melamine. Nine times out of 10, this would cause me issues. When I would go to knock the wood out, it would cause too much pressure, causing cracking either up high or down low. I, I ended up using rigid foam. I didn't want to buy a whole $60 sheet, so I ended up getting two one inch thick pieces and gluing them together, then cutting out my shape. It, I didn't know this, but rigid foam is actually pretty sandable. I was actually pretty impressed by how smooth you could get rigid foam by sanding it with some 150 grit sandpaper. But nevertheless, I still wrapped the sides with some packing tape. I glued that down into position on the mold. With mold number two, I grabbed some melamine coated hardboard. I graphed out the river pattern to scale and cut that out on the bandsaw. I later smoothed the sides out with a spindle sander. Of course, I am using the rapid set flexible construction adhesive to glue the river board pattern down. And again, I want to reiterate how important it is to remember to do everything upside down, mirror image. But I, I, I just, I, I love techniques like this because you can just really, this, this really gives you a chance to express yourself and make something completely unique. Sure, everybody's doing concrete countertops and vanity tops right now, but you, you're gonna have something different. As far as the river design is concerned, I drew out many designs to scale until I fell on something that was pleasing to my eye. But this was a, a combination of what I felt she was trying to describe to me and also what I felt would complement this design as well. And I guess we will see if I was successful in doing that. We'll see. After the glue was cured on both molds, I went ahead and sealed all the corners with 100% silicone. Now normally to clean up the corners, you would see me lay down a bead of caulk, spray it down with some foam window cleaner, 
then clean up the edges with my finger and be done with it. This time I wanted to try something different. There's this trick that I've been dying to try. Now, this is not a new trick. This is an old trick that I've been seeing other people do, but they take a ball bearing and they glue it to a dowel rod or a stick or something of some kind. I'm gonna use a CA glue called Thick and the Accelerator to make my life a lot easier. Uh, there's an affiliate link down below for this if you're interested. Lay down a bead of silicone, then they run this ball bearing along the corners, wait for the silicone to dry, then they peel the excess off. This is just nowhere near as easy as what I've seen in other videos to take off, but I can definitely see that the results are way better than the way I usually do it. It's, it's much smoother and way more consistent. I'm thinking that maybe I skipped a step two. I feel like maybe in other videos I've seen them wipe it down with like a, a paste wax first and maybe that's what makes this so much easier to peel. Oh, oh. so much easier to peel off. On mold number two, we're going with flat sides and a slight radius on the corners. But on mold number one, we we're gonna go with a live edge with the assistance of this edge mold. I've got a link down below for these edge molds. These are fantastic. My favorite thing about these is that you can use them over and over and over again. But that's why I created this exit out the back so the excess can exit out the back without me having to, to cut this so that it can use this in other molds. But please, don't forget to make an allowance for the thickness of the edge mold to your dimensions. I reminded myself to do this, I wrote it down in my notes, and I still forgot, and I still had to make this mold base over again. Now it's time to move on to the blue fire glass, but before we do that, I gotta show you something real quick. So, a friend of mine woke up one morning and decided that he was gonna start making custom rugs. Um, Anyway, he made me this awesome custom rug. I'm gonna leave a link down below to his Instagram, Laced Within. He does an absolutely phenomenal job. He'll make you whatever you want. And he's not just good at making them look cool, they actually, they, they're quality. And oh my God, is it soft. But uh, I've only got one problem with these rugs, and that it is too nice to put on my floor. It, it only makes sense to be on the floor in my shed, but I can't bring myself to do it. It's gonna get dirty. So go check him out on Instagram, Laced Within, give him some love. So in order to do this, we're going to glue the fire glass down with some spray adhesive. Now what I've done in the past is I would spray some spray adhesive and then place the pieces of glass individually. This time I'm gonna try something different. So now I've taped off the next design, sprayed down the spray adhesive, and then I'm just gonna pour the glass right over the adhesive areas. Afterwards, we can go ahead and take off the tape and the glass won't stick anywhere I don't want it to. It sort of worked out. <laughs> I am gonna have to mess around with these and still place a lot of glass by hand, but not too shabby, not too shabby. This will work out. Joe, I, I, I know what I'm doing. Calm down. This is, this is just a rubber float, by the way. We, we don't do projects like this because they're fast and easy. We do projects like this because they look cool. It's finally time to pour. I got both my molds both prepped and ready to go. I've prepared my metal reinforcement. I got my tools and my mixing stuff and my water all right here, ready to go. And as usual, we are gonna use the Rapid Set Mortar Mix in tandem with the Rapid Set Flow Control. <laughs> the funny thing about this is that this is not a concrete countertop mix. This was never intended to do such a thing, but it can do it anyway. So I'd like to take a minute to thank RapidSet for sponsoring this video as well as providing the RapidSet Mortar Mix for this project. RapidSet Mortar Mix is a repair and restoration material that can be applied from a half inch to six inch thickness. It can go horizontal, vertical, it can even be applied overhead. It doesn't require any bonding primer and is rock solid in one hour. This makes it perfect for masonry and mortar beds. One coat stucco and plaster repair and just general wall and floor repair. You can 
fill in voids, repair missing corners, pour caps, set blocks, tuck point, and yes, you can pour concrete countertops with it. Rapid set mortar mix. If you save time, you save money. All right, you've already seen me do this a million times, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray down the molds with some WD-40 as a mold release. Gonna wipe off the excess. Then we're gonna pour five quarts of water into the bucket first. We're gonna pour in our rapid set mortar mix. Mix it up until you got a nice peanut butter consistency. Then we're gonna mix the rapid set flow control until we get more of a pancake batter consistency. Rapid Set Flow Control is a plasticizer that will not only give you that pourable consistency, but also add strength. Then once you have a nice consistent mix, go ahead and pour your mold or molds about halfway up. That's when you wanna add your metal reinforcement. Then go ahead and fill the rest of your mold up and make sure to tap or vibrate those bubbles out. Now, if you use anything else, you're gonna have to wait a week till you demold these. But since you're gonna be using the Rapid Set Mortar Mix, you can go ahead and demold these in one hour. In about 30 minutes, you'll start to see the product set up and start to get very hot. That's when you wanna make sure to water cure it for one hour or until the heat dies down. This is going to help you avoid surface cracks. <laughs> and then there's the reveal. Now it's time to polish these bad boys. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the details of how I do that. If you wanna know how I polish a concrete countertop, I'm gonna link that video right here up in this corner. But the one thing I do wanna talk about is that they are both going to get polished, but this one is going to have exposed aggregate, this one is not. Now in order to get down to the exposed aggregate on this one, I'm going to first use this rough diamond wheel. That's gonna get me past the cream and down to those rocks. With this one, we're gonna skip that step, but I'll get into that later. But after I've ground the top down with this rough diamond blade, then that's when I'm gonna go to these polishing pads and just go through all the grits until we get a nice, buttery, shiny, smooth surface. But you are gonna need a variable speed grinder and you have to get one of these dust shrouds, otherwise you are going to have a dusty, dusty mess. All right, now we're moving on to our other vanity top. Now in this case, our client has requested that the color stay a nice solid color. They don't want the exposed aggregate. So instead of starting off with the 50 grit like I usually do, or actually the rough diamond cutter, and also since I've, I've never done this before and I'm not even actually sure if it's going to work, I'm going to start off with the 1500 grit and see where that gets us. This should prevent us from exposing any aggregate and at the same time getting a nice smooth surface. All right, so when I did the 1500 that gave me an orange peel texture which I couldn't seem to flatten and even out. So I went down to the 800, still wasn't taking off enough material to even it out, but then I went to the, the 400 and that seems to be working out pretty good. So I'm going to even it all out with the 400 and then work my way all up to the, the 6000. Mounting the undermount sink is very easy. We're gonna flip our top over, and with a masonry bit, we're going to drill some holes that are just a little bigger than the threaded metal sleeves. This is gonna leave some room for the one minute epoxy that we're gonna inject into the hole to glue them in place. After the epoxy is cured, we're gonna lay a bead of silicone around the lip of the sink, set it in place, install the metal brackets that were included with your undermount sink, and you're done. This one's all done, but I won't be installing this one in this video. Uh, I still have to make the vanity cabinet, which is going to be in another video, which I'll make available right here when that one's done. All right, up next, we're going to pour the epoxy. But before we do that, I've got to make a border to contain where I don't want the epoxy to pour off. So in order to do that, I'm gonna get pretty much any kind of wood I want and I'm going to cover it with Tyvek tape so that it will release from the epoxy butter. Then I'm going to seal them up with 100% silicone, clamp the sides and let it cure. 
All right, this concrete top is ready for some epoxy. I've uh, glued some borders to the top with some 100% silicone. I have sealed it with a concrete sealer that I've been using called Simple Coat. So all that's left to do is to mix up the Total Bolt Thick Set Epoxy, color it, and pour. Now we're going to let this sit for two to three days before we can take the edges off and round off the corners. But before this cures, don't forget to run a blowtorch across the surface to get rid of those surface bubbles. Now with a router, I'm just going to trim the sides flush with a, a flush trim bit and then round over the corners with a radius bit. So I've taped off all the concrete. I've given the epoxy a light sanding with 220 grit. Now we're just gonna mix up just a little bit more epoxy, do a top coat so that it can fall over the sides to hide these machine marks. Let it cure for a couple days and then we're ready for install. Yep, she's ready for install. What do you think? I did make a last second decision to let the epoxy pour over the bottom sides right here to make it look like the water's kind of just falling over the sides completely. So minor hiccup, uh, I unfortunately will not be able to show you the final install of this vanity top in this video. Uh, the scheduling just wasn't working out and I gotta get this video out to you guys. So I promise I will make a separate video very soon on the installation of this vanity top and I will link it when it's ready right here. But I hope I still inspired you today and thank you for sticking with me on this one and I hope to inspire you in the next video.